Hello everyone. My name is Soundarya Ramesh and I'm a third year PhD student at the National University of Singapore. Today I'll be presenting our work on a physical key inference attack which was done as a collaboration between National University of Singapore, University of Oklahoma and University of Texas at San Antonio. Today, mechanical lock systems are a popular solution for securing doors and cabinets of several commercial buildings and residences. Further, several reports predict the prevalence of these systems even in the future. Hence comes an important question. Are these systems actually secure? Some of the well-known existing attacks on these systems include lock picking, which involves inserting tools into locks in order to unlock the mechanism. However, this has the disadvantage of being less healthy as inserting specialized tools raises suspicion. To overcome this, researchers proposed an attack which involves capturing images of keys in order to predict the key secret, which is actually embedded in the key surface. However, this approach also has a limitation that it requires still images of keys and hence is less practical in a non-stationary setting. This brings us to a research question as to whether we can design an attack which is more stealthy and practical compared to prior work. As a potential solution to this question, we wondered if we can utilize the sound of key insertion. If you've ever inserted a key into a lock, you've heard a characteristic sound of key insertion. Let me play this for you now. My team and I were curious if this sound of key insertion contained any information about the key secret, which is actually a set of cuts with varying depths. To our surprise, the answer was a resounding yes. And in, this rest of, in the rest of the talk, we will show you how this is possible. We now propose our work, Kinergy, which is a novel audio-based key inference approach. Specifically, Kinergy utilizes the timing information between audible clicks that occur during key insertion for its inference. Because this information is inherently noisy, Kinergy augments this with other noisy information from the visual domain, which specifically is blurry visuals of keys in motion. The main goal of the attacker here is to launch a practical key inference attack. Specifically, the attacker is capable of launching a proximity attack with the possession of smartphone that can be used to capture the video and audio of victim's key insertion. Similarly, an attacker with long-range recording equipment can perform the same attack from several meters away. Our work assumes that the attacker has knowledge of the locks make and model and also has access to 3D printer or code cutting machine in order to recreate the key. Before describing our attack, we go into some essential background on locks. Within each lock are a set of pin stacks, each of which consists of a top pin and a bottom pin. In the locked state, the boundary between the top and the bottom pin does not align with the shear line, hence preventing rotation. However, when a key with the right set of depths is introduced into the lock, the bottom pins are raised such that the pin stacks perfectly align with the shear line, hence unlocking the lock. If we take a closer look at the key, we see that it has cuts of different depths. It is in fact these depths that make up the secret of the key and are also called as key bittings. Each of these cuts take on 10 possible depth values. Each key secret is represented as a five digit number, in this case, 39359. This analysis also indicates that the ideal key space, that is the total number of keys should be 10 power 5. However, due to manufacturing constraints, the actual number of keys is about 75,000. The key's geometry also gives rise to peaks, also known as ridges, which become crucial part of our attack as they are responsible for the production of sound, as we will see next. We now explain the cause of key insertion sound, which we first reported in our prior work published at Hot Mobile 2020. If we take a closer look at lock and key during key insertion, especially at the ridge in the pin, we see that whenever the pin falls off the ridge, it produces a sharp click sound. Because of the presence of multiple pins and ridges within the lock and key, during key insertion, the following click pattern emerges. Here, the time T1, T2, T3 and so on indicate the time at which the different clicks occur. And it is in fact the time interval between these clicks that carries information about the key secret or the key's bittings. Given the bitting code, we can always compute the corresponding click pattern. As an example, given the code 39359, we can construct the exact shape of the key that corresponds to this code and hence precisely identify the position of ridges that are responsible for production of sound. In this way, we can utilize the distance between ridges to compute the corresponding audio click patterns. In this process, we make one assumption 
of consistent insertion speed. Due to this idealistic assumption, we also call these audio click patterns simulated click patterns. Now that we are equipped with sufficient background, we describe the high-level design of Kinergy, which consists of the audio and video components. The audio component takes as input the key insertion audio of victim key, performs audio analysis to output an observed click pattern. The video component takes as input blurry visuals of key insertions, applies prior work to output a reduced key space. This reduced space contains the victim key with high probability. We then utilize the simulated pattern computation module to convert this key pool to a set of simulated patterns. Finally, we have a pattern ranking module that ranks these keys K1 to Kn depending on the similarity between their simulated patterns to that of the observed click pattern to, in a sense, convert this reduced key space to a set of key rank list. In this example, we see that the victim key takes a rank of 3. Now we delve into the details of audio analysis. Particularly, we talk about two important challenges faced by this module and briefly describe the solutions. First, let us look into the challenge of inconsistent insertion speed. We know that the simulated pattern is modeled based out of constant insertion speed. In the idealistic case, where the real key insertion also exhibits the same pattern, there would be a one-to-one -one correspondence between the clicks of the two patterns, and this would make pattern matching straightforward. However, in reality, the key insertion data looks very different and therefore, the observed click pattern has very different trends from that of the simulated pattern. Even if we scale up the simulated click pattern to match that of the observed click pattern, we see that there is no sufficient correspondence. This is clearly a case of inconsistent insertion speed in the observed click pattern. As a solution to this, we propose the detection of what we call localized groups. In a majority of keys, clicks tend to occur in localized groups as shown here. We call such localized groups clusters, and in this case, we observe up to five clusters. Also, we make an important observation that clicks within clusters exhibit close to consistent speed. Due to this, by detecting clusters from key insertion audio, we will be able to perform pattern matching within clusters and hence solve the first challenge of inconsistent insertion speed. Now that we've solved the first challenge, we move on to the second challenge, which is noise and click detection. If we take a particular cluster, such as cluster 3 in this case, and look at its corresponding observed click pattern, we observe that there could be excessive clicks detected. This could happen due to noise during key insertion or errors in click detection algorithm. Similarly, there could be a case where a particular cluster has less clicks than required. In order to solve the problem of detecting the wrong number of clicks or click pattern, we propose fusing information across multiple key insertion trials. By doing so, we eliminate the noise and obtain a click pattern that most likely corresponds to the underlying click pattern. Finally, we have a pattern ranking module that compares the clusters present in observed click pattern with the corresponding clusters present in simulated patterns. By doing so, it obtains a combined rank list which we depict here. Please refer to the paper for more details. We now present the evaluation of Kinergy. For the experiment, we create a door-like setup and installed two locks on them of the Schlage SC1 lock type. This model has a total of 59,207 vulnerable keys based on the presence of clusters. We test our system with a total of 74 keys and also perform experiments with multiple microphones including smartphone, parabolic mic and condenser mic. We now provide a summary of our evaluation results. The combined audio-video approach considerably improves the performance of video-only attack. The acoustic attack works well up to 25 feet with parabolic mic and up to 10 feet with a smartphone mic. Our attack is also robust to noise such as dog barking and human speech up to 75 dB noise level. Finally, our attack works well for different participants and is also consistent across days. Now we elaborate only on the first result in the interest of time. I would kindly request you to read our paper for the remaining evaluation. We first present the results of video-based inference alone, where we utilize blurry visuals of key during insertion to obtain a reduced pool of keys that most likely corresponds to the victim key. In this plot, we depict in sorted manner the reduced key space for the 74 keys, where a lower key space is preferred. From a total of 59,207 keys, the video-based approach gives a reduced key space whose mean size is about 166 keys. Although this is a significant reduction, it is not sufficient for a realistic attack.
Hence, we augment the video approach with audio-based information. The red curve shown here plots in sorted manner for the 74 keys, the key rank obtained by the combined audio-video approaches. This approach achieves a mean rank of 63. In particular, there are about 6 keys in the tested 74 keys that achieve a high rank within the top 10. This was previously unachievable with video-based techniques alone. As an example of this, we consider a key KV that depicts one of these six keys, and this key achieves a high rank of 5. If we extrapolate this result that we obtain on the 74 keys to the whole key space, this would correspond to a total of 4,700 keys that achieve a rank within the top 10. This is in fact a considerable number. This result really depicts the potential of audio and how well audio complements video-based techniques to considerably improve the key inference accuracy. We now discuss broader aspects of Kinergy's attack. Firstly, our attack would work on different lock models within the Pentamler family. Secondly, although we propose our attack with an attackable key space of about 60,000, in reality, far fewer keys are in circulation, as shown by several reports. This indicates the increased efficacy of our attack in practice. Lastly, we propose a countermeasure that involves playing high-frequency inaudible sound during key insertion. Because our attack utilizes high-frequency features, playing any noise in this region significantly degrades the attack. To conclude, we present a novel acoustics-based side channel in physical lock systems. Utilizing this, we propose a multimodal attack to infer key bittings. We hope that our work brings to light the potential of multimodal side channels and how they can enable novel attacks. Thank you for listening to the talk.